Hi, right, Kenan. So we're joined by, uh, well, I'll let you introduce yourself, sir. Hi, uh, I'm Danny Sanifov, as some of you probably know. Um, I'm a lecturer at Liverpool College and I also went to the college as well. Um, I've been in the, my position, my current position now for a few months and I was a progress tutor before for about a year, just over a year. So, um, yeah, that's that's me. Really. So <laughs> you started then in 2011 and you did... Started at Loughborough, yeah. It's 2000, well, 2009 I did a young, apprentice, young apprenticeship yeah. um, in sport and then once I finished my GCSEs, I went through, came back to... College and yeah, had uh, you as my tutor. So. That's a, it's a good thing, Danny. It's a good thing you have me as a tutor. <laughs> um, so you did the B Tech Sport, like a lot of these guys who are sitting here now watching this. Yeah. Um, yeah. So no, go on, go on. Yeah. So uh, started uh, the level three course um, partly because obviously I'm massively into sport. Always have been. I probably always will be. Hopefully, um, but. The reason was obviously because of the independence that came with being at college. So that was the main, that was the big attraction as well. That I could like it helped me grow or helped me become a lot more mature a lot quicker. Yeah. For obviously my career purposes. And I think the big thing is obviously you're now a full time lecturer. Um, obviously at Loughborough College, you know one of the biggest sports colleges in the, in the country, the best. Well, we would definitely say that. But yeah. how do you how do you get to to that position? What what's been your career path? Obviously you did the B Tech for two years, and then what yeah. happened next? And how did you kind of fall into this job? So it's been a bit of a roller coaster, really. So while I was at college doing my um, level three, um, so I was there three days a week, um, had the rugby going off as well. But also I was getting two days a week um, in a secondary school experience. So that wasn't just coaching or anything like that. It was I was trying to get inside into the classrooms. So I was trying to get involved in as many lessons as I can, um, not and not just PE. Um, it was interesting to get involved in maths lessons, English, um, French. Um, I was I, t I helped teach an Arabic lesson. <laughs> Fair so point. That was quite interesting. Yeah, I was a learning curve. Can you remember anything uh, from that? Um, no. Brilliant. No, really. <laughs> Brilliant, Dan. Great but, teaching there. But it was only it was one lesson, and it was what I liked was the way that how I was trying to gather different cultures really. Yeah, yeah. So I was gathering um, how different cultures could perceive information. If you were trying to give it them as a teacher, okay, if that makes sense. So obviously, um, so that was the, yeah. Then from the beta, oh, yeah, then yeah, and you did your work experience. Then what you went on to do a degree? Yeah. So um, after love college, um, went up to Sheffield Hallam, um, did a three-year course in physical education and school sport. Um, that was massively helpful. Like it was, there wasn't a lot of practical, which was which was good because I was able to understand like, sociology, psychology, and also we dip into uh, the structure of lessons and session delivery and stuff like that. So a massive range of knowledge being given to me, which was massively helpful. Um, at the same time, because um, I was at uni about three days a week, so I was using my overtime to, yes, do my work, but also get experience in other schools. So I was going around Sheffield doing coaching, doing um, deliveries to groups of how they could get themselves to university, what they could do with their degree and give them that sort of information. Um, once I finished there, so three years passed, um, got as much experience as I could. Um, voluntary work is massively important because I think you're doing it for, that guarantees that you're doing it for the experience and not just obviously the money, you're getting paid for it. Yeah. Um, one other thing, so after that, I finished at university, um, went back to a job that I'd been doing um, all through university. So the weekends I'd be going home doing work and went into a graduate scheme selling electrical products. So that was exciting. That got, it got a bit of a buzz from it. Um, I learned a lot in terms of my communication skills, teamwork, which is massively important in the role that I'm now in. So eventually um, something came up that I wanted to, Go for so obviously the progress tutor role, which was the key stepping stone really between me and becoming a lecturer. Um, the role was predominantly working with at risk learners, so any learners who just needed a bit of help needed that extra push, not just to pass the qualification but also hit the distinction as well. So it's not just I'm working with all levels, that's probably the most important job that's got me to where I am now because of. The ability, my ability now has grown to work with different levels of learners, people from different backgrounds, people who have had different learning experiences. 
Um, so yeah, that's sort of my journey so far. And then once I got into my role as a lecturer, um, it's just been a learning journey the whole time. So every single lesson I've learned something new. Um, and obviously communicating with staff that are in the department or before I got the job working, communicating with people who were in the area that I wanted to go into. So I understood what was required, not just academically, but also what experience I needed and what key experience is going to make me better at my job. Yeah. So, so yeah, no, so why was it FE then? Why not secondary education? Why not primary education? What was it about FE that appealed to you? I think it was this... Uh, within my learning, I really enjoyed the college experience. So it's a massive, there's a, you make a massive change between being in the secondary education and in the university. That's such a big change. Um, your social life changes, your expect, just your expectations, and you have to make decisions that are going to affect the rest of your life. So I thought it'd be a key opportunity for me to help others experience it in a positive way like I did so not blowing anyone's trumpet but like obviously you helped me quite a lot in terms of getting me to university yeah. so I wanted to have that and give that to others so no. that was my main aim for that choosing that age group no it's, it's like I say and I mean you're also understanding yourself here. I mean when you was at college you came out with well basically D side D side D side you came out with the highest grade possible um, yeah. and you always have been hard work and I think Obviously, for me, watching your career grow has been fantastic and getting you back into FE and, and that side of it. You, you know, you'll become, you are an excellent teacher, but I'm on about you'll become one of the best teachers in the department in the next you know, four or five years. It's, it's, it's you know, yeah, inevitable. I, so. I think the key thing for me, though, is obviously FE is such, a, <clears throat> it's such a, an area where you can really have such an impact, I think. And that's one of the things that really drawn me to FE teaching was that you can yeah. really have an impact at 16, 17, 18, where people are really trying to figure out who they are um, yeah. where they want to go um, and what they're good at and what they're bad at and also they get to specialise which I think is really important yeah. they get to do things they really love yeah. um, and do sport and that's and that's a real key thing I think for teaching whereas in secondary sometimes you're teaching a lot of kids um, a lot of age year groups and year 7 to year 11 is such a vast difference um, and I think yeah. also you're teaching kids sometimes who don't want to be there or have been not forced there, but, you know, oh, it's just another lecture, lesson, etc. So yeah. I think FE allows that from, from yourself. Yeah. So in a, like you say, an FE situation, um, in lessons you can sort, you can I notice a difference between they, they're trying to draw the information from you rather than you having to like try and keep speed food, uh, spoon feeding them yeah. information. So like you say, it's quite receptive from their side as well, which is really satisfying within that career. I think it's a key thing as well. Um, you spoke there about voluntary and all the way through since you've been at the BTEC to degree and obviously afterwards. Voluntary work yeah. is huge now. And I think that these guys now at 16, 17, 18, what can they yeah. be doing to, to kind of get themselves in a position where they want to teach like you, yourself? Um, I, like, I understand like from a lot of... Um, for a lot of people, it's quite daunting to go into a working environment and it's quite intimidating to go and work with someone who's a professional in that area and, in a way, you don't want to come across as not as knowledgeable um, to not just to the people you're trying to teach, basically. Um, and that was quite a daunting thing for me because the, the teachers I was working with were unbelievable at their jobs and it, I've done nothing but develop from doing that. For, so I think... It's important that try and look at the positives that are going to come rather than having to use your spare time to go in and take part in these lessons. See it more as you're not, yes, you're doing it for free and you're not getting paid and stuff like that, but you're getting paid in knowledge and you're getting paid in experience, which is a lot more important than being given money. Like, in my opinion, especially in FE, the more experience you can get, the better career choices you're going to make because you're going to understand what's required in that career. I think also so I think that's the most important thing about that. It's important to network as well, isn't it? It's important to yeah. to, to, to keep. I mean, me and yeah. you kept in touch when you went off to university, and obviously yeah. when you know when that job came up, I was like, Danny, this is a good job for you. You know, you should you should put an application in. You see what kind of way you get at. And I think networking yeah. really has an important factor of knowing kind of what roles are coming up and you know what's happening. Yeah, like keeping in contact with people is massive. Um, like with me, obviously, it helped me massively in terms of getting a job. Um, 
but like with ex- this is where it's important about experience so you can always send an email ring up the person someone you know previously who works in a position that you're curious about and if you didn't have that previous contact with them that would never happen so why not like take the opportunity and absolutely grab it with both hands like I couldn't agree more with your um so what are the good parts of your job and what's kind of like the bad parts? What do you enjoy and what, what's things that people probably don't see? Okay, so obviously... Working with me is, get, is the good part, yeah? Yeah, that, that's obviously a positive. Cheers, part, cheers Danny, mate. Appreciate that, thanks. <laughs> um, you see, I was... The only the things I was worried about was, one, um, not being on the right level with the learners. So you worry about not knowing the learners that well and having to teach over 100 learners over the week. Like, that's a lot of people to have to understand and get to know on a different level for each person. But that's probably the most exciting part about the job. That's pro- being on that level with them, getting to know them all, understand how you're benefiting them. That's um, that's my favourite part of the job, um, just the satisfaction from that. Um, obviously, I said that was a, one of the worst things, because at the start it is. Like, yeah. It's so intimidating and... Yes, they're young learners. You, sh- you just shouldn't feel intimidated, but it, it is what it is. Um, you could be the most confident person in the world, and you you could still feel like that. Um, I think when another, sorry to go back uh, on that. I think when when you're sat there or stood there in front of you know twenty twenty five people all looking at you, yeah. and they're yeah. like, okay, well, you need to know your stuff because they're at an age yeah. where they can they can question it. They can they can know if you're yeah. fibbing. They can know if you you know trying to pad, um, and it yeah. is it's, it's daunting. But I think you're right that adrenaline buzz when you come out of a good lesson or you know yeah, one of the great. learners finally gets that distinction but you know when you're marking that work and you see them actually get what you've been trying to you yeah. know get over to them it's i keep saying this is one of the best i mean i we are we're in the best job in the world i mean i don't go to work ever thinking i'm going to work i go to work so i think i can't wait to go there and you know talk so yeah. we've got some amazing staff i mean unbelievable staff and unbelievable learners as well so it is yeah. it's, it's not a, it's not a chore to work it's it's, it's an absolute you know godsend it's, it's brilliant to go to it but it is daunting, and like you say, it is when you yeah, stood there in front of twenty five people, and <laughs> so and you've always got one who's going to try and say something silly, or one who's going to try and challenge you. Um, not challenges in its naughty behaviour, but challenges in do you know your stuff, and that is, yeah. you've got to know that. But no, sorry, go on. You talk yeah. about some other positives. I, I just jumped in. Um, oh yeah, so obviously a lot of teachers get a lot of marking. Um, I thought, oh my god, this is going to take me. This is going to completely throw me out. I'm going to have no spare time <laughs> and all this, but. Like I said, like you say, like you get a bit of a buzz from it. You see, from marking, marking it isn't, I don't just see it now as this is someone's work, I've just got to say, is it right or not? Yeah. Like, this is a way for you to see whether learners are developing and where they're not developing so you can help them. So it's important to see it in a positive light. So yes, marking does take time. Yes, it it is quite frustrating when people, <laughs> learners aren't putting in what they yeah. understand and they're not putting in their full capabilities. But that's, a learning curve, say, for instance, if I did it, it'd be a learning curve for me to then understand how they can develop and what I have to teach them yeah. following this. Um, on the positives, so I'm not saying, like, there are a hundred positives uh, in the role, like that, like you said, like, you go to work every day knowing it might be this much, it might be this much, you're, you're going to affect someone's life positively. Yeah. And that's, the re- that is, one of the main reasons I got into it because it's just you feel you come out of work and you think I've made a massive impact on someone's life today. Yeah. Like even if it was just you've told them that one little mark that they told taught them that one little thing they need for them to upgrade to a distinction, that is going to be a difference between them going to this university or this university. Yeah. Like and that's an important step in their life. Um another positive that is like say the staff, um, especially in Loughborough, the the staff there are fantastic um, and you can from the different experiences and different areas that they work in it's just you, as a teacher you learn stuff every day not just as a as a student so yeah po- positive just they're all over the shop positive. no it is i think also sometimes and this is not me to let you you guys learn as watching this um i don't think sometimes there is how lucky they are what they've got at Loughborough and how yeah many amazing teachers have got and you know sometimes it can be, it seems frustrating when that one's not got this or oh, she's might be wrong or he's might be wrong etc but every single yeah. teacher in that department is trying to make the best for these young yeah. learners lives and they're trying to impact on it they're trying to and they don't always hit the mark there's always things we can learn from but 
everyone in the in that in that department has got a kind of a good soul and they want to help and they want to try and help yeah. every learner. And I think coming into that workplace, it inspires everybody, it inspires myself, it inspires everybody to kind of come in, you know, you're coming in, you'll learn yeah. stuff off Johnny or off um, Blake's, off yourself, Spencer's yeah. Tom, some different things. And I mean, literally you can learn from every single thing. I've sat there and watched Lucy's lesson and thought, well, that's really good. All these little yeah. things apart from the department, you can sit there and learn from each other. I think that's a real key thing to work at Loughborough that you kind of get. But even just FE sectors, a lot of people want to work there. And they've also had a lot of experience. So if people look at like Mark yeah. Thorpe and Steve Wilson, they've had careers oh, before they've gone to teaching. And they can teach yeah. things that, you know, from from the you know the sector, which is vital for the for the learners kind of go into jobs in the future. Yeah. Yeah, I think um like you were saying with the learners, it's important for them to understand that you're not there just chewing their air off, moaning <laughs> at them about work. Like I, I get onto students a number of times a day. Yeah. I need this doing, I need this doing, yeah. I need this doing. But from my experiences as a learner myself, like it's so from my experiences as a learner coming into it now, I understand this. It's only for my own good. So you can like, remember, it's not to be so. So it's, it was your own good. That I had to keep ringing you sometimes and tell you how to get the assessment in and all that stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. I've done this. Yeah, yeah, I've definitely done it. Definitely yeah. done it, Danny. Yeah, don't lie to me. You're not lying to me. Yeah, that psychology's in, isn't it? And you're like, yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. get in for you tomorrow, and then I'm doing it all night. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but now, but it's it's well, good it's good to have that. Um, sort of level playing field where it's understood by the learners that you're not just trying to get on their case yeah. you're trying to benefit them and help them grow into the career that they aspire to go into so just a quick kind of guide for them then if they want to get into FE teaching it's it's a degree it's um, you know experience and then yeah. what can they do afterwards is it a PGC or is it can you learn the job or is it a bit of both what is the options so my the way I went into it was obviously college, university. Um, then I came out of university, went into work. Um, but you could have gone straight from university straight into a lecturing role where you are able to do the training at the same time. So uh, positives of that are things like you're earning money, you're earning a normal wage of a normal teacher, which is fantastic. You're obviously getting the job satisfaction, but also you're getting the qualification at the same time. So you're not having to compensate with finances or anything like that. Um, the other pathway, well, one of the other pathways is PGCA. So that would take place after your degree. So you'll spend time at maybe a year after your degree um, learning, obviously, the things that I'd have learned in two years um, in one. So, yes, it's half the amount of time. Um, positives are, obviously, half the amount of time. Uh, you're working, obviously, a lot more with other PGC learners. But... Negatives can probably be that you're going to have to compensate in terms of finances because um, you won't get paid, obviously, the amount that you would be. But different ways will suit different people. Uh, for me personally, I wanted to get in and around it. I wanted to get stuck into it and learn while I was on the job, yeah. whereas other people like to go in and solely concentrate on that qualification, well, I which mean, is, everyone's different. Yeah, exactly. When I did the PhD route, so I, I did a year where I did the PhD route, did it at Derby University, um, and it allowed me to take my time, do the graduate, you know, the yeah. education in time to get my placements, and kind of really focus on being on a teacher. And I think that's one of the great things. Uh, the other thing is that yeah. you have to pay for that course. You know, you don't really earn much money. Um, and then the flip side for yourself is, like I say, is that you get the money straight away. Um, but yeah. again, on top of that is you've got to do a qualification alongside it. So I know because I see you every yeah. night on a Wednesday evening, isn't it? Wednesdays. Yeah, yeah. You four know, till about nine. Probably. Yeah. So after you know you saw Danny on his lessons four o'clock, he's then going on yeah. to college from four till like I say eight o'clock nine o'clock at night. Um, yeah. in lessons at the college, learn his, um, doing his PhD basically part-time over two years, um, and then yeah. it also becomes assessments alongside your marking, yes. alongside so your work. Like, yeah, so we have quite a few assessments, and then we've got observations from our le our lecturers as well. Yeah. So they'll come in, they'll liaise with our managers, um, our, uh, what's the I'm looking for? So, uh, mentors. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's quite, it's, but exciting. Yeah, it's, and that's the same. I think like you, you hit the nail head. It's about your personal per preference. It's about how you think you learn best. And yeah. some people can handle that. Some people like the way. And both ways will get you to where you want to be. Um, yeah. The key thing is you need a degree. It's as simple as that. Um, and the yeah, degree really needs to be in sporting area. I mean, you you study physical education. Yeah. I did sports studies. Yes. People have done sports science. 
Um, you can do a sports yeah. coaching degree. It doesn't really matter as long as it's in sports. I think O'Neill did educational studies. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, educational studies, which you can go that route. Right? So yeah. loads of different things. Um, so yeah. the last question for you, Dan, then, um, is if I took you back to 2011, back in A109 yeah. on, them, on them sofas, um, and I set you next to yourself at 16, what would you tell yourself? Um, first thing I'd change is my hair. <laughs> you had um, the beam, the beam <laughs> couldn't you? No, Just no, in BBO, no, all across, yeah. Hiding high, high that five edge, yeah? So, what I'd do is, um, I'd, obviously I had a very, I had a great group of friends there, um, so my, I had a lot of social time with them, we had a lot of laugh and stuff like that, which was great. But I would plan my time better, so I was too... In, you know, at that at that point, I was too excited to go out and play the best level of rugby I could, um, go out with my mates, do what I wanted to, get a car, get all that sorted, drive around with car with mates, park in McDonald's car park, yeah. all sorts. And, but I, I should have spent not more. I should have spent a lot of more time on my work. I was quite um, lucky to like. I've always been urged to work, work, work. Um, but I think it's important to, even if it's sitting down, writing, this is my weekly plan every week, just every Monday morning, get up, write a weekly plan. I think that's massively important and sticking to them guidelines as well. So it's all right writing a plan out, but sticking to it's the most important thing. Um, so that would be my most important, one of my most important um, things that I should have followed differently. But I think as well, like we said previously, a number of times over this chat, um, voluntary work is so important. Um, not just because it's nice to write on your CV, but just within yourself, you've learned so much. Get in as many different places as you can, primary schools, secondary schools, colleges, if, if you're lucky enough to, um, and communicate with your, with the staff that are working there. So with the lecturers, ask their advice. They're not, they're not just there to teach you one lesson. They're there for... They'll, they can help you out in a number of different areas. So don't just think you're stuck to that. For instance, I have groups that I teach research methods to. It doesn't necessarily mean that they can only come to me for that. Yeah. They can come to me for, ask me about voluntary work. They can talk to me about careers advice. We're all in the same boat and we all want the same results, basically. We all want the best out of every learner. And, yeah. and the other advice would be not to go on night out before recent week. Yeah, it's not, it's not ideal, is it? Not ideal, is it, <laughs> Danny, when you like, came in? Was it? Yeah, I think we had little words, didn't we, after that? We had a few, had a few words. We had a few words, didn't we, that, that you'd been out the night out before Reese up at 8.30. I was there on time. You were still in the last <laughs> night's clothes. Yeah. <laughs> You're making me look very bad. Yeah, yeah, you? exactly. Them little words, didn't we? But no. Um, well, like we say, it was a learning curve. It was. And you learn from it, you and didn't... you develop, and you grow as a person. And when you got home that night, it was quite an interesting conversation with Dad, wasn't it? Shoot me out. Shoot my ear off. Dan, well, really so, appreciate your time. Thank you so much. That's all right.